Coach, what does it feel like to, to be back out here, um, kind of getting ready for the season right around the corner? Good, especially on a day like today. But it, it, it's good. It's you know, The ramp up time is very little, but I, I think we always look forward to the first day of training, especially this time of year where you know that February is close and you're getting into competition. You see the light at the end of the tunnel now, so I'm happy for the boys. Every year is a different group. And what kind of makes this group unique, uh, early on at least from what you can see? We do well academically. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's one of the best teams we've ever had. Well, it is the best team we've ever had academically. So I think that has always been a pretty good indicator of maturity. And maturity is always a good indicator of organization. And organization is always a pretty good indicator of being present game competition so uh, if that's any indicator that that's a good one uh, because fall was, it was really good that way in a lot of different ways but I, I look at that one all the time as, as being kind of the leading priority and the best indicator of how a group operates. Rick, you mentioned a lot of good things coming out of the fall. What else specifically did you really like from this team coming out of the offseason? Uh, I think consistency and in the training environment. I think that has something to do with older kids. We, you know, we've got 10, 11 older kids, probably as many as we've ever had in the, in the program, albeit a lot of them are, are pitchers. And a lot of those pitchers didn't throw in the fall, but at the same time, they're very present on the field in terms of their teaching and how they operate in the program. So I think that part's good. I think the strength component has been good from the standpoint of what they're doing in the weight room. I'm very happy with that. But I, I would just point again to the consistency of how they operate. For Michael Doolin and Troy Leneve, are they going to be ready for the season? And is anybody else, you know, potentially not going to be ready for the season? I think those two right now, we, we just will take it kind of a day at a time. Uh, <coughs> obviously, they didn't play during the course of the fall and trying to ramp up and get ready for the spring. So right now, just pushing them along. They feel good, but at the same time, put them on the field when we think it, it's it's going to be advantageous for them and certainly the team. We've got a lot of guys coming back from last year. After the way things ended last year on their own, regional. how much those guys do you think that sit with them as they prepare for this year? Yeah, we you know we don't talk a lot that about that a lot. Maybe at the beginning of the year we did, just in terms of the guys coming back and. But I'm sure it, it's, yeah, I'm sure it sits in their stomach. I, I think any time you finish a season, not necessarily where, where you want to be, it leaves a, a lingering scar or an effect on how you want to go about the next season. So I think they learned a lot from last year. I say they, the kids that are back, obviously. But uh, I, I would say their hunger is, is good. It, it's, a, it's a hungry group. And I think for the right reasons, too. It's just about trying to get as, as good as they can as a group. The outside looking in, it seems like depth pitching could be a real strength for this team. How do you feel about uh, Yeah, yeah if, if comparing more depth than last year, you know, what that depth means once they get out there and start throwing the ball, we'll see. But I, I like the experience. There's some guys that have locked some important innings and locked some innings that you know, from an older kid standpoint, have, have proven to be beneficial for our team. So the, the fact that they're back and been in those roles before, there, there's some comfort to that. You have a pretty good sense. Re, sorry. That's, uh, yeah. We're going to talk to Enrique today. So yep. What has he meant to this program since he's been here? What are you looking for out of him this year? He's a hungry kid. He, he's, he's very competitive. He's very competitive in everything he does. I mean, he's a Dean's List student. He operates well socially, operates well here. He just has a high care level for what he's doing. I mean, he's a cool kid. I mean, he's just always out here with a, he's got a good disposition. He always makes contact with me. Uh, he's got a good feel of the group. Uh, he was, he, you know, he was out yesterday. He was in the, in the dugout though. And he, you know, he's teaching the whole time. He's teaching the young kids and he's got a good way of teaching too. So uh, yeah, he's a, he's a special kid in a lot of different ways. A lot of arms back. You have a pretty good sense for who you put out there to start games. So is that going to be kind of a process as you go? Uh, we've got an idea. I th there's probably four or five kids that are probably in that mix, and I think the next three weeks will have a lot to do with it too, because this is the first time we're really scrimmaging since November. That level was November 13th, so 
I, I think the next three weeks and getting them out there and building up the volume and looking at their health and see where they are. I mean, there's some guys, obviously, Holton and Futrell that have been there before, and Owen, he's been there before. So we just have to see how they, they operate in the, the first few weeks. When, when you're talking about guys who have spent most of their time on the bullpen, what are you looking for to, to, to see that they can start in I think endurance, and not just physical endurance too. I, I think mental endurance. It's uh, you know it's probably the difference in running a, a 220 versus you know a mile. It, it's just the ability to kind of pace yourself and control your adrenaline over a course of time, which is its own skill. Uh, you can't you can't ramp up. I mean you're. If you're coming in the middle of the game, the end of the game, you're more of a sprinter. You know, you got the ball, you know that there's going to be an end point. And as a starter, there is no end point until the staff pulls you or you pull you. So I, I think it's, a, it's kind of a learned skill. There's something to it. And you can't, you can't go out the first couple of innings and raise your emotions to a level that you can't recoup them in the third and fourth. So I think it's that. I think it's managing a lot of that, at least in the early time. And we won't have a lot of time to do it, obviously. Build them up to maybe 75 pitches before we get started. So that is kind of a fluid thing too during the course of the season. You yep. used the word uncertainty last year when we asked you about your pitching going into the opener. Uh, you may not have that in terms of roles, but just in terms of number of guys who've been there and pitched, do you feel like you've got a little more certainty this year? Yeah, certainty is a dangerous word sometimes, <laughs> but um, it feel better about the experience and the numbers yeah and, and it's not like we have a ton of numbers either but what numbers we do have it's it's more about the experience inside those numbers um you know how, how what is kind of your plans for getting more power in the lineup this year how are you gonna kind of make sure that it, it doesn't kind of get the way that it did last year sometimes you know i, I think power is one of those things that happens i, I do I, I i don't think you can get into a training regimen and, and just start trying to lift the ball. I, th I think it's about getting to the ball and getting to the middle of the ball and doing that consistently. And I think as these kids get stronger and as they learn timing and as they learn to hit the ball over the plate and learn balance, then power seems to come. And I, you know, I'd point to Spencer that way too. Spencer wasn't, uh, you know, he wasn't, well, he, he could have been, but he wasn't really that power person until he, he came into his junior year. And I, I think you could say that for a lot of Vanderbilt guys, whether it's going back to Ryan Flaherty or, you know, Pedro was one of those rare guys, Pedro Alvarez, who had, who had power. But I, I think power is one of those things that evolves. I think the biggest thing is just their understanding of how to play offense and what that means to them individually. And really, if, if we touch home play, that, that really at the end of it is the most important thing. How is the catcher situation looking? Uh, similar to last year, you know, you got Bulger and Espinal's year better. Uh, the two kids behind them, uh, Poteet and Law, two good freshmen. Uh, good, good. I mean, those kids have kids have done done well, and their their leadership skills have improved as well. How are you feeling about your infield, and is anything settled there in terms of you have a feel that this guy will start at this spot and so on? Not yet, but I feel good about that. Uh, from the standpoint of you know having Parker back is a good thing. Having Diaz back is a good thing. Vastine being more of a, a a player is a is a good thing. Um, we've got we've just got a little bit more depth that way too. I would say from a younger standpoint, and the younger kids have have played pretty well for the most part. So I think right now it's it's just trying to put the best best infield out there that fits us best and whether that's Vastine or Diaz at shortstop or where's Nolan third or first I don't quite know that yet but what I like about them is their ability just to go over there and do it and just keep playing as if that's their natural position which is a good thing. You mentioned Holton Futrell and Hunter Owen is there anyone else who's been you know training as starters that you're having training in that role this spring? Uh, I would say 50% of the staff is training as starters, and then that, that I would say there's 50% that are training as short people, so, uh, or short durations, I should say, short people, that's me, <laughs> and, and maybe you, Eric. Uh, but, but it's as far as long, uh, I would say probably 50% of them, so there's a, there's a decent amount. 
the S- go ahead. Yeah, the, the SEC is obviously the time. Yeah. As you look at it now, I think most of the teams in the top ten. Is it as, can you remember it being as deep as, as it is right this moment? You know, I think about that every year, and probably not. You know, and I just say that because of free agency. You know, if there's such a thing in free agency that's affected our conference, it's this one. You have more star players, I say star players, I say that. There's more good players that are wandering back over to this conference. And, I, yeah, I, I believe it, it probably will be as, as good as it's ever been. Um, probably like the NFL, you know, you get those 9-8 and eight teams that are very, very dangerous in the playoffs. So. I, I just think of our league as, as that way too, and it's probably going to get stronger with the addition of two. You know, you bring Oklahoma and Texas to the party, and then okay, uh, it's, it's pretty solid stuff. You had Holton and Futrell both starting really vital games in the regional last year. Um, having people back who pitched in those sort of games already have that experience. What what does that do for your staff? Well, I, I just think you said it. I think experience is, is important for any player, and if, especially on the road. You go on the road in a regional, especially Oregon State, uh, but you could say that about how Devin pitched at Arkansas and how, how Carter's pitched and several of them. I, I just think any time that you're pitching in these venues, you do it on the road and you do it in a, whether it's the SEC or regional experience or super regional experience in Omaha for some of these kids who are on the team. It goes a long way. It does. You start to create a better heartbeat for yourself and rhythm, and uh, that usually points to better outcomes. Have all the pitchers who didn't pitch in the fall, are they starting to ramp up again? They're all pitching. Yep, everyone's pitching. So from a health standpoint, you know, knock on something. It's been good. <laughs> kind of a fluid rotation last year. I mean, it was a goal yeah. to avoid that and you know, going to SEC play at least a little more. Set on your two or three. Yeah, I think if you had your way, Gentry, you'd probably want a four-man staff. I mean, I've always felt good about our program when, you know, you, you, you can fall in line with a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Tuesday or Wednesday starter. That always is the best, best scenario. Now, you can't always get there, and sometimes it takes time to get there. But if you can get there, it keeps everyone in rhythm. And I think the, the quicker guys can get to their roles, the better for you. What is the benefit of having a bullpen with so many guys that already have experience closing out games? Experience. <laughs> Just done it. They've done it before. Not to say do it again, but they've done it before. And they've done it before against competition. Listen, your, your best recruits are seniors. I make no bones about it. You get seniors back in your program. Tennessee was very good last year. They had some older kids and some other reasons too. I mean, really good pitching staff. But you know, older kids go a long way in, uh, in, in making the team pretty good. Uh, did you know that Nick and Thomas were going to come back? You know, before the draft, or was that a surprise to you? Yeah, well, I just think it, that too is always fluid. You just don't know what's going to happen. You know, whether it's a draft, whether it's free agency, whether it's something else that that pulls a young man away. Uh, yeah. You know, I say this, I'm just very grateful to have those kids back. I, and I, you know, I tell them that all the time. And I minimize it. It's, that's a, it's a big strength because it, it just helps your program in numerous ways. You think of the 14, 15 hours away from this place right here that the, those kids have an impact on younger people and the conversations that they have and management of time and so on. So. Yeah, it's, it, it, it has a lot to do with what's going on in the field, but it has so much to do with what's, what's going on off the field. After losing so many contributors in the outfield besides Enrique, have you kind of decided you know, who might be stepping into those roles? There, there's a few of them that way too. I think, uh, you know, I, I won't name all of them, but yeah, I, I think we've got some good players that way. Uh, the, the guys that played some against Sanford and Arizona State, play again but I like the versatility of all of them too you got, you got, you got several guys not, not that they can play center field like the guy who's out there right now but <laughs> they play pretty well and they can play all three positions and I like that Any more questions for Coach Lewis? Thanks, yeah thank you guys thank you. Yep, I appreciate it thank you very much
you didn't, I guess, always probably pitch at full health a year ago. How are you compared to the last season? Yeah, no, I feel great right now. Um, and, and I credit all that to my trainers here, trainers back home. Um, we worked really hard and you know, getting better, being able to be at 100% on day one. And I'm feeling great right now. So You've started, you've pitched as a closer. Where do you see yourself fitting in this year? Um, wherever Brownie says, honestly. <laughs> um, you know, we never really talked about roles early on. and. All that stuff is earned, so yeah, I'm just hoping to get out there and compete and do whatever he tells me to do, I'm gonna do. Talk about depth in the rotation, just in the whole pitching staff in general with George. I mean, how you know the guys you have and the experience that you have and what they've done, how do you feel about your group? I feel great, personally. Um, you mentioned experience, and that's that's our biggest thing this year. We have a lot of experience. I mean, a bunch of seniors are back here, which is pretty rare, but it uh, makes the team special. And, we're able to connect with a lot of the younger guys, um, help them, especially in their first semester. It's kind of tough for a lot of them, just you know, transitioning from college or from high school to college. So, no, it's good. And as a staff, we're, we're looking really good. I'm excited to see the guys start to compete out here in scrimmages this week and next week. Yeah, how can that age kind of be helpful as the season drags on? And you know, the players in the SEC. Right? Yeah, I mean, you hit it on the head with the uh, just knowing the SEC and. You know, how tough the conference is. Um, a lot of guys have been out there during big games, big moments. So just that experience and really being able to show the guys, the younger guys at least, you know, what you're supposed to do out there and how to handle it. Um, how did you make the decision to return for your senior year? <clears throat> um, well, a big, a big decision, a big part of the decision was having my little brother here. Um, <laughs> that played a huge role in it. Uh, it was obviously a, a late grab from, from Corbs and the staff, but uh, yeah, definitely that, and then just having some unfinished business here. Um, you know, again, being hurt last year, and I've really got to prove myself, I guess. So um, you know, being able to be back here and be healthy is, is a huge thing. But Chris, Chris was definitely a big factor in that. You know, having him come here, it's very rare you get to play with your younger brother, especially at a, a high Division One level. I mean, my cousins did it in football, but um, yeah, it's something that you can't really train for anything. So. What's that been like so far? It's weird. Um, <laughs> I'd say the weirdest thing is actually seeing him around campus, you know, walking to class, um, or eating at, at McGugan over there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's weird. It's, it's cool seeing him grow as a freshman, though. He's kind of, you know, making his own way, um, creating his own path. So it's cool, and I kind of let him do his own thing. I don't want to involve him in everything I do, but, you know, it's, it's nice being able to look after him. What role did you play in getting Chris to come here? <laughs> um, I think, I mean, he honestly, he did it himself. He, he worked hard in high school, and he was a late bloomer, um, but he, he just kept to his, his journey, and you know, everything worked out for him. This is always his dream school to come to. Um, I guess I played a little role in that, uh, coming <laughs> here, but no, it's everything worked out for him, and he's really excited to be here, too. The, the staff last season it, you know, was good at times, but then other times, you know, late in games, things like that. What, what do you think went wrong, and, and how do you, you, you view that being corrected this year? Um, I mean, we don't really like to look on the past too much, um, especially as a staff. You know, there's nothing really that we can do from that now. I mean, each guy this year is a completely different guy, um, whether it's me, whether it's anybody who, who failed in certain situations. Um, you know, you learn from them, and you try to move on from it as quick as you can. Um, having a short memory as a pitcher, as a hitter, anything really in baseball is really important because, I mean, as a hitter, if you fail seven times out of ten, you're, you're a Hall of Famer. So, um, but, yeah, I mean, we're all excited to just get out there and compete and really, I guess, just get better every day. Does that kind of tie a little bit into the unfinished business you talked about earlier? Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, we didn't finish the way we wanted to last year, and obviously that doesn't really happen every year. But um, you know, as a program like Vanderbilt, where we expect ourselves to, to get to the end every year, and that's just like a standard that we hold to ourselves. And, um, yeah, that's, that's obviously the plan this year, but you know, we're focused on today and obviously the first day of training. So. What growth have you seen from some of the incoming, you know, the freshman and sophomore pitchers in the fall and the spring? Yeah, no, um, everybody's gotten significantly better since the fall. And I mean, that, that usually always happens, especially at a school like this. I mean, we're constantly competing against each other and pushing each other to grow as, as players, as people. Um, so yeah, I think we'll see a lot more growth now as we get into competition. Um, we got three, four weeks until we really get going, but um, we're scrimmaging now, so it's going to be cool to see guys start to, to flourish, really. When you've been fully healthy, you've been an elite strike thrower, you 
back at that level now that you've had some distance between the issues of a year ago? Yeah, no, I'm, I've been throwing bullpens. I've um, been live the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I'm attacking the zone. I feel good. So, I don't know, I'm just, again, looking forward to getting out there and competing in any way I can. What's the uh, pitch, mix, pitch mix look like for you this year? Um, yeah, I got a two seam, four seam, uh, the cutter, and I'm working on a new slider and, and a changeup. So. Huh. What's the difference between the cutter and the slider? Because I've, I've heard those used interchangeably with the, the pitches that you throw. Would you say yeah, those are the, two uh, pitches? The cutter's a little more firm. Okay. Um, and then the, the slider's a little bigger and a little slower, but there's more movement on it. So. Any more questions for Nick? Got Enrique Bradfield Jr. Well, you're an upperclassman, <laughs> so uh, I, I mean, I feel like you've always kind of had your own way of leading. But what's it like now to to be that junior and know you're one of the other guys, the I older think, guys? I think it's uh, just fun to be be around. Uh, we have a great group of seniors who are here. Um, they do their part in the locker room. They're very vocal. They're very active in in the leadership role. So just having the having their backs and they have my backs is kind of a, a fun thing and, and we kind of just all try and lead together the best we can. What were you getting out of just this summer and the work you were doing individually? What did you want to get out of that that you can bring into this year? I kind of just wanted to play. I wanted to expand my profile and do things I hadn't done uh, before and I hadn't been a part of a USA team and I hadn't stepped foot in the Cape. So uh, I thought checking those two things off my list was something that, uh, that was important to me. So I just went ahead and did it. Are there any improvements you've made to your game since last spring? I think there are. I'm always <laughs> working. Uh, every day is a new, a new progress and a new challenge, so there's probably a lot of improvements. What would you say is the biggest one? Uh, probably just uh, my arm strength and defense. That's just one thing I can point out. Corbs was saying he kind of sees you teaching, you know, as when he turns around you're, you're kind of saying something to the younger guys. Is that kind of a natural thing with you? You've always been that way? or? Just that's just what you feel like you need to do at this point. I think a, I think a little bit of it is natural, uh, but I just want to be able to help those younger guys get acclimated and uh, make sure they're learning everything they need to, so that they can have success in their own career and be a part of the team. Really, how's the outfield situation looking this year? We have we have some really good outfielders, so <laughs> it's going to be fun. Coach mentioned, or actually Nick kind of mentioned, a little bit of an unfinished business mentality of this team coming off last year. Coach kind of alluded to it too. Is that your general sense of what the mood and energy has been like this offseason and now as you start to get closer? Yeah, I think um, you step foot on this campus, you, you have one goal in mind, and I've been here for two years and haven't accomplished that goal, so I'm looking to get it done. From that standpoint, how do you kind of help set the tone? Because, I, I mean, the little bit that we have gotten to know you the last couple of years, we know that that, that stuff fires you up. Yeah, I just want to make sure I'm setting a good example for the younger guys on the team, uh, just working hard every day and making sure I'm staying consistent in who I am and my actions. Has that gotten easier for you as you become older and more of a leader? Yeah, I would say with the maturity, it's come a little bit easier, but um, it's just constant, constant work every day and just general improvement. You, you dealt with some pretty crazy stuff a year ago. I think the, the 11 pickoff throws to first against Ole Miss, the <laughs> whatever that was in the swamp in Florida. How do, you, how do you deal with that? What does that say to you when you know you can get in a team's head like that? It doesn't really phase me. It changes nothing about what I do. Would you like the major league rules with the bigger bases <laughs> and the, the pickoff throws? I'll see when I get there. <laughs> when you look up and down the SEC, and Corbin even said this might be one of the best years in terms of just talent. What's it like? To, I know you got to get into it first, but to know hey, that's in front of you. Yeah, there's a lot of competitors, and I'm looking forward to being a part of this team and uh, going out there and seeing what we can do against those guys.